Hey guys, Chris, Midwest Long Range. Back here in the shop, we're gonna do a quick rifle overview. Um, some of the components you see here might look familiar from some of my other builds and some of them might look new. So what we have here is, like I said, this is kind of my current PRS build. I've Everybody says I have a tendency to build uh, several rifles move between stuff here and there but this is the one I've been working on for a while now um, obviously most of you know in the industry lead times are really long so some of these parts I've been waiting on for a while and uh, I've also you know been kind of back and forth on some of it and been using it and with reloading components it's just been really hard to get and I haven't had a opportunity to spend a ton of time with this rifle like I want to but it's in its final configuration and we're going to kind of go through it today to begin with the heart of this build is a Curtis Customs Axiom Action this has the pinned recoil lug and a uh, pinned and screwed uh, 20 MOA scope rail it's a 60 degree three lug bolt as you can see 60 degree very smooth, um, very tight tolerances. Uh, so far, I just, I really enjoy this action a lot. Um, since I first got into kind of the long range stuff, I've always been told that Curtis had uh, some of the nicest products you could get. And I, now that I own, I actually own a couple of them, and uh, I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly I really like the product um, but yeah that's the heart of this build is that Curtis Axiom um, and then running out the front side here this is we ordered this barrel blank from Benchmark Barrels and a very good friend of mine out in Washington uh, Anthony Ward at Crown Ridge Barrel Works did the work on this for me uh, this is a barrel nut design. That's what Anthony specializes in. And uh, we have not seen any drop in accuracy out of any of the builds that we've done with Anthony. Uh, I have a couple of benchmark builds. I have multiple, uh, you guys have seen a bunch of Excalibur barreled stuff in here on my table. Uh, we shoot with a group of guys that does the exact same process um and it just these these guns really shoot well but uh this this barrel uh we were is a one and eight twist 5r rifle rifling and uh it's a finish length of 27 inches i know that's a little odd but once you break 27 inches there's an additional cost so i, I kind of stayed out of that this is a inch and a 16th straight no taper barrel uh very heavy setup um, but it seems to be very accurate so far out front we're running a hawkins precision tank self-timing brake um, this is the one where once you get it timed you can lock down the set screws apply a mount of torque it's uh, got a, a deal out here in the end we'll do a closer in-depth video on that component there i really like that brake so far it disperses away from you so you don't get as much sound and uh, just whiplash kind of back on the on the shooter. Um, and then, of course, this this, uh, this firearm is sitting in my MDT ACC chassis. Um, you've seen this chassis on another build, my six millimeter Creedmoor I had on a 700 action. I've had this chassis for a little while. It's been underneath a couple different guns, and I'm wanting to do a full depth. Uh, review on the chassis since I've shot it under multiple setups. I actually am getting ready to go shoot a my first centerfire PRS match. I've done plenty, I've done several other rim fires now, but we're gonna go shoot a centerfire. But the, so far, I really like this chassis. I like the versatility, the comfort. Um, you know, it's it's got weights underneath the barrel there in the channel. Um, weights back here in the back and everything's adjustable from comb height to the length of uh, or uh, comb and length of pull and all that kind of good stuff and 
So we, that's the that's the chassis. Uh, we're running a Accutac out front. All my bipods are Accutac. I'm not going to go into the specifics. That'll be a different video where I talk about Accutac in general. Up top, we are running a Leopold Mark V HD, five to twenty-five by fifty-six with the CCH reticle in milliradiant, it's sitting in a set of Hawkins Precision rings, and the the Hawkins rings are fantastic. Those guys over there are great guys. And uh, the Leopold scope, this is my first Leopold Mark V. Um, obviously I've been with Ride On and still am. I run their products on all of my uh, 22 PRS style firearms. My six millimeter arc has a Ride On X7 on it. But uh, for this build, I acquired this scope uh, pre-owned. It's not a brand new scope but I'm, I'm gonna run it for the time being. So with all that being said, that's the overview, right? That's, that's a lot of the components. Well, yeah, we, we got a wee bad uh, cheek piece here. That just makes it a little more comfortable. And the bag bullet bag rider, which that thing is, I love that thing. That, that makes this chassis that much easier to use. Anyway, and a Timony hit trigger, which that's, that's the trigger of choice for myself. Everybody has their preferences. The hit is the way I like to go. Now, since we've kind of talked about everything that makes this rifle in components, we're going to talk a little bit about how it's been doing shooting. And to be perfectly honest, I do not have a ton of rounds through this gun. Uh, again, components have been really hard to get. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor chambering. Uh, a lot of folks ask me why I went back to the to the 6.5 especially why not stay with the 6 or the 6 arc or 6 gt uh, 6 dasher all, all of these other cartridges that are well known in the prs community and the si simple uh answer is this is what i'm comfortable with i like the 6.5 i have a lot of components to load 6.5 bullets primarily brass all that kind of stuff uh, well, brass is just a recent thing I was able to solve with uh, getting some Lapua brass. But that that's really, you know, it, it's a cartridge I'm comfortable and I understood. There's tons of data on it. Is it the best low recoiling, flattest shooting PRS cartridge there is? No. No, it just, it isn't. There's other cartridges that, that get the job done. But guess what? So does this one. And uh, with, with the way this chassis allows me to move weight around and all that, I can mitigate uh, the majority of the recoil of this rifle with that brake, the weight system. It, uh, it does mitigate, mitigate recoil pretty good. I've had a couple people shoot this gun and they all kind of agree with me there. Now, is it going to, my six arc, way, quite a bit less recoil, obviously. And that's less recoil would help me spot my own shots better but this is this is the route i decided to go i have some other builds in the works but this has been the the labor of love i've been in i've been working with for a few months now i mean we've had some ups and downs we had some parts come in and we had to send out for a little tweaking um uh, other than that I, the thing went together I did load development on it, which I probably should have filmed, but I didn't. Um, did some load development, Scott Satterley method, like Dalton and I kind of covered. And, you know, we went through there, we found a good velocity node. I feel like I gave up a little bit of velocity on this. I'm shooting a Lapua small rifle prime brass with a CCI bench rest small rifle primer. We're shooting uh, 6.5 stay ball powder out of this gun. Uh, I am wanting to try some other powders, but that's that's the one I went with. And we're shooting a 140 Burger long range target hybrid. You know, it, uh, it, it's running a little slow. I'll give it that, but it's very accurate. It's shooting, you know, in that 0.25 uh, ish group range i think it, it i think we've i've measured a couple of groups at like 0 0.21 22 
Uh, I measured a couple at 0.25, uh, 26 territory, you know, and then I've had some bad ones too, work through the load development, obviously. But uh, once we, we really got it figured out, it, it seems to be doing its job really well. But this, this gun is, that's the build. This is what we got. I will f have this on the, like I said, at my next centerfire PRS shoot I'm going to. So I hope everybody out there uh, likes the setup. If you have any questions about it or any of the components we used, just let me know. I'll go into most of these components in depth. We are gonna have a, I've got a, a, an abundance of Accutac bipods that we'll, I'm gonna cover in a later video. But other than that, guys, this is my build. So stay safe and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.